Hi, my name is Max Sansaroni. Welcome to this video. I'm making this video because I got a lot of questions on YouTube about my other videos about how I record the drums, about what kind of mics I use, mic placement, and what I record into. So I'll just talk about the process on how I record drums. So the first thing, which for me is the most important, is the source. So it's what the drums sound like, the tuning of the drums, how the drums sound in the room. And uh, I would really suggest taking a lot of time, learning how to tune your drums and get the sound that you want from them, that you hear in your head. And there's uh, great instructional DVDs on that. Bob Gatson, or Gatson, I don't know how you say his name. Sorry, Bob. Uh, <laughs> He, uh, he has a great instructional DVD and he has a lot of videos on YouTube also. And uh, that really helped me out a lot just to uh, get the tuning thing down. And a lot is just using your ear and getting the sound that you hear in your head out on the drums. The second thing are mics and mic placement. So uh, let's have a look at the mics that I use. So for overheads, I use two overheads and one kick mic. I just use three mics on the kit. And these are all Kel mics. These, the overheads are Kel HM1s and the kick mic, which we'll take a look at after, is a Kel HM2D. And with just these three mics, you can get a nice, full, fat, warm sound. And uh, these are very inexpensive mics. I think the overheads are 130 each, Canadian. The kick mic is uh, 180. Anyways, you could check on the Kel site. It's uh, K E L A U D I O dot com. And in my opinion, these mics sound great. Uh, so I use two overheads, and what I do is I pan them left and right. So you really get like a stereo image of the drums. In my software, in each track, I pan this one left, this one right, or the opposite this one right, this one left depending on how you want to hear the kit. One way you'll hear it like you're sitting behind the kit, stuff will be panned this way. The other way will be like you're sitting in the audience listening to the drum kit from the other way. So, for mic placement, I just really experiment. I, I start by placing the mics, I record it, see how it sounds. I might bring them down, see how that sounds, bring them up, just try a whole a lot of different uh, positions and uh, I just I just choose the one that's most pleasing to my ear that I like and what I also do is I space them evenly from the snare so what I do is I take either tape measure or wire and I go to the middle of the snare and I just measure to the mic and I do the same thing and the reason why I do this because I'm panning them left and right, so the snare will be exactly in the center. And, uh, okay, that's it. Let's have a look at the, the bass drum mic. So on the kick, this is a Cal HM2D, and uh, I place it outside of the kick. Well, here I have no choice because I have no hole in the front head. And uh, even if there was a hole, I still like placing the bass drum mic not inside the bass drum, just outside. I just like the sound. You get a nice low end, nice fat warm sound with a little bit less attack than you would if it would be in the bass drum, but that's just my personal taste. And uh, I do the same thing with the bass drum mic. I just place it and just move it around and see where it sounds best. You know, a blend of low end and nice attack and uh, I just record it, listen, and see what, what I like the best. Right now I have it placed maybe 10 to 12 inches from the bass drum head. Okay, so the next thing is what do I record these mics into? And I have to, two, two setups that I use. One is this setup here. It's an iMac computer and uh, my audio interface is a DigiDesign 002 rack this thing right here and uh, 
I use Pro Tools as software. And as you can see in the Pro Tools, three tracks. One is kick, one is overhead, one is overhead right, one is overhead left. And uh, this works really, really well. Really simple system, but it works great. And uh, another system I have here is, this is the real budget system, which I use when I don't feel like setting up the whole Pro Tools thing. And uh, it's pretty much just a, a Mackie board, 12 channel board. I just use three tracks most of the time anyways. And uh, here I have an iPod with a Belkin mic. And this is a stereo mic with a stereo line in. So the stereo line in is right here. And what I do is, is I just plug a mini jack into the stereo line in. And this is coming out of my Mackie board from the tape output. And I just use these three tracks. I have kick, overhead left, overhead right. I pan the overheads here. And then I get the mix that I want, the levels that I want. And then it goes into the iPod. And I record here. Very, very simple and very, very cheap. This mixer, you could probably get it for like, I don't know, between 150, 200 bucks used. If you already have an iPod, you can just get this mic. The mic costs maybe 70 or 80 dollars. And you'd be surprised how good it sounds. And some of the videos I made, I, I used this, uh, this setup here. And I mean, it, it sounds great. You, you could EQ before it goes in if you want. And uh, because you can't do it after because it's just going down to a stereo track. Not like the Pro Tools where you could mix, mix it after. So I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it answered some of your questions. And uh, if you have any other questions, you could just write me and I'll try and answer back as soon as I can. I'll follow up now with just, uh, I'll play a few uh, grooves and just play around the kit so you could hear what the mic sound like. I'll first play on this kit and then uh, it'll be another example on a different kind of kit and the mics will be in a different placement. Alright, so uh, see you next time. Take care.